Hello again. I'm Marty Walzer, the uh, Raging Owlbear on social media. And I um, came on tonight because I wanted to record some things about Storm King Thunder. But I saw that actually Matt Colville recorded a video about fudging dice rolls. And I wrote about this about a year and change on the blog in 2017. And um, I found it interesting that his take was quite different from mine. Um, one of the things he noted is that he fudges dice rolls all the time in his games, um, you know, uh, and it's a little bit of a controversial subject. So let me, um, let me talk about why I do not and why I think, especially if you're a newer uh, game master, newer dungeon master, that you should probably shy away from fudging until, well, until you've established yourself a little bit. And let me let me explain why. Um, so first, let's talk about what fudging a die roll is. Um, for those of you who didn't see Matt's uh, video or you're not familiar with the term, um, fudging is when you're playing as a dungeon master and you have your dungeon DM screen up or something similar, and you're rolling behind the screen, and you decide to change the outcome of the roll based upon what you think should occur, you know, and there are a number of reasons you might do this. Um, sometimes your players might be just running into a stream of bad luck and, you know, you just don't want your adventure to go down in flames because they're rolling terrible or your monsters are critting multiple times in a row. Um, and you just don't want a bad night of gaming. Um, you know, similarly, there may be a time when you have a certain idea in mind of where the story should go, and because of the rolls of the dice or because of something that happens in the game, something occurs that would thwart what you believe, this, the direction that you believe the story should go in. And so, you know, you maybe you change the outcomes a little bit to allow, you know the story that you want to develop occur, um, you know, perhaps the players got the jump on a, on a major villain in the campaign before you, it was sort of time for the culmination of that villain's plans. And, and maybe they're about to kill him or something like that. And you, you make it such that the bad guy gets away, you know, and ha ha, I'll come again and we will, we shall meet again. And, you know, cause you want to set him up as the, the boss at the end, or maybe not the boss, but you want to utilize him further in the campaign. And so you decide to save your NPC or, you know, conversely, like I said, the, the dice rolls are going badly for the players and you decide, well, you know what, maybe they need some saving as well. Um, first, let me talk about saving your NPCs. Absolutely do not do this. This is one of those things that if your players discover that you are cheating the system, so to speak, that you have, a, have an NPC or a, a, a monster or something, that you want to achieve some sort of victory or that, you know, prior to the players facing them down later or for whatever reason, the players get the jump on them, and they would have won. If they find out that you saved him against the rolls of the dice, that that they were going to win, that they had a victory, and you stole that victory from them by altering the outcome, this will really, really hurt your game. Um, because one of the most important things that you need at a table of people you're playing with, especially if they're not long time, really close friends, you know, maybe they're people that you've met more recently that you're gaming with from time to time. They're not close buddies that you've known for 20 years or whatnot. Um, if they find out that you are altering the die rolls, they will absolutely not trust you for anything else in the game. You will, you will lose that trust relationship, and that is really hard to build. And they may not want to play in your game. 
because they may see what you're doing as railroading or cheating. <clears throat> Essentially, you know, you're thinking, oh, I really just want to save the story. I want to make it a better story for them. But what they're going to see is that you have this pet NPC that is unkillable until you believe it's unkillable. Until, you know, you think it's time for it to be killed. Um, and that takes away from their input in the story. So there's this thing called player agency, and that means that they should have as players, as their characters, an impact on what happens in the game world. That their actions, their decisions mean something in the game world. That they're not just riding the railroad train to Storytown. So by you thwarting their actions, that, that they made a good decision and they, you know, got the jump on the villain or, or they have really good tactics or whatever. And for you to take that victory away from them means that you have taken the only control they have over the game world away from them. Because the only control they have is their own actions in the game world. The GM makes up everything else. All the plot, all the NPCs, you know. I mean, unless you're playing a game that has some narrative sharing, like Fate or, you know, one of those other games where you can, where the players have mechanics that allow them to alter the narrative. But in a game like D&D, where, the, where the, the DM basically has control over the narrative, the players only have control over their own actions. And if their action is resulting in a victory which you take away, that will absolutely destroy their trust in your game. That, that you have stolen enjoyment from them. You have taken away their agency. The very little thing that they have, have control with, uh, control over, that is, in the entire campaign, which is their character's actions, you have altered because you want the story to go in a different direction than the dice said they were it was going to go in. So that will really harm your game. So that's that's one thing is, is that you're by stealing a victory, you're taking away their agency. Similarly, let's say they're having a bad night. And let's say you're not protecting your NPC and, and but you're just trying to actually help them. That can also really harm their player agency because they might be in a real tough fight, a fight that's literally for their PC's lives. And they're thinking of tactics and they're trying to work together and they're having a hard time. But they may just scrape through that victory. They might just make it through that victory. If they believe you were helping them, that you were going easy on them somehow, or that you pushed the odds in their favor, that victory will feel hollow. They have no longer earned that plot point, that story point, they, that victory will be, oh, well, you know, you went easy on us. We, we, weren't, we weren't actually going to win, but you let us win. And that is also a, kind of a terrible feeling to have that, that, you know, just like when you're playing a board game with your kids and they get to that age where they're like, hey, you're letting me win. You know, that feels bad because that and all those accomplishments that they might have had up to that point are now in doubt. Um, and so you have also removed player agency because instead of their actions and their decisions and their tactics being the thing that led them to victory, they find out that you are actually cheating in their favor. And... They probably won't like that either. It, it's not as damaging as protecting your non-player character of, of, of cheating against them, so to speak, of fudging against them. But even when you fudge for them, you are taking away something that was theirs and you're saying, oh, I gave it to you. This You didn't earn this. This was something that I gave you. Even if that's not what you intend, that's how they might feel. And that really 
can really hurt your game and it may even cause players to be like you know i don't i don't want to play in a game like that um secondly or thirdly <laughs> however many points i've gone in there is a thing in dnd where the story that is being developed as you play it's not just your story as the dm it's also the player's story every it's a shared storytelling experience and their input is important through their player agency through their actions and the dice even the dice have an important role to play in creating story because sometimes that random chance that awesome critical hit or that terrible critical miss that might actually turned into something that was kind of funny or or you know that later at the time you feel terrible but later you're talking about it you're laughing about it you're those moments controlled by the dice um which you know they're controlled by fate it's not randomness i i think matt got this one wrong in that he said dice are just random no you know that's part of the mechanics of the randomness is part of the the luck or the fate of your characters hinge upon those dice rolls so when you alter that well getting back when you alter that the story to be the way that you want to be, have the story be you are actually taking away from their story instead of it being a shared story where you know what their actions determine the shape and direction you are basically narrating the uh effects of the game you're you're narrating the plot to them by changing the outcomes because you've basically said i've determined what the outcome is going to be what the outcome i want it to be as a dm and no matter what you roll or no matter what my bad guys roll that's the outcome I'm going to push the story toward rather than letting the outcome uh, come about naturally from the play, from the rolling of the dice, from the character's actions. So that's another way you destroy agency. Um, and you are essentially, by fudging, you're kind of railroading because you've said, I've predetermined that I want the story to head in this direction. And if the dice say it's going to go off this way, I'm going to redirect it. And that is a form of railroading. Um, so, you know, again, stealing a victory takes away player agency. Um, or giving them a victory that they normally would have earned takes away player agency. Altering the story in a direction that you would prefer rather than how say the dice work um takes away agency and you might actually by altering the outcome of the combat you might actually mess up maybe it's not the story you intended but you might actually mess up a moment that would have been like awesome like you know oh my god we we're all so close to death you know and, and but we pulled it out or, you know, oh man, it sucked. Brian died that night, but it was kind of funny. And, you know, the, you, you're taking away those moments of tension, those really exciting moments that hinge on the roll of the die. You know, it's like, and that's the one of the reasons that when I play the game as Dungeon Master, I roll everything in the open. Because when that giant has got his big old warhammer and he's about to smack the bejesus out of the paladin, and you roll that die, everybody is watching that thing, you know, creep its way across the table and turn, 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 turn. Ah, uh, oh, you know, oh, you know that that moment of victory or oh, you know that that tension. The dice add those fun elements to the game, especially when everybody's rolling out in the open. Because everybody's really like, oh, let's see, you know, oh, wow, look how much damage I got. But then, oh, my God, look at that. The, that guy just clubbed the crap out of me, and I just took 20 point hit points. Um, those moments are really fun when you're rolling the dice out in the open. 
Um, because you know you are in you are invested and you don't know what's going to happen and they are invested and they don't know what's going to happen and you all you roll the dice out in the open and everybody together looks down in anticipation and you know of course if you're mul rolling multiple whatever six sided dice or eight sided dice everybody's you know quickly counting oh my god oh my god you know there's there's fun and tension in those moments um, where those dice rolls become a pivotal part of the story. So, you know, I, I recommend if you're a relatively new game master, do not, do not fudge the dice. Just, just let fate, <laughs> let randomness, let all that develop naturally. And you might actually create a really cool story that maybe wasn't the one you intended, but went in a direction that you didn't expect and was kind of cool because of that. Um, lastly, I'll try, oh, I'll end on a couple of points. So there may be times when, when, as I said, if the dice rolls are going against the players and you're thinking, oh man, they're just getting beat down and I don't want to have a TPK. I don't want to kill everybody. There are ways for you to assist the story without cheating the dice. You can be rolling out in the open the whole time and still not have to fudge, but not necessarily have a combat result <clears throat> in a party kill. And of course, b by fudging the dice, you're saying, oh, I'm saving them from a party kill. But you don't need to fudge the dice to do that. Let's say everybody does go down. What about, are they captured? Are they taken as slaves? Are they ransomed? You know, the, they're the, oh, they're big heroes. Um, they get captured by bad guys. The bad guys are like, hey, let's ransom them off. You know, maybe somebody wants to pay for them, a patron or, or somebody. Uh, but, but basically, there are alternatives to fighting to the death. And you can even hint during the combat to your players, when things start to go badly, say, it's okay to run away. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, if you say, hey, we wanna, you know, retreat. You don't have to, even when you're playing on the grid, like be like, okay, count your squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, you can run 10 squares up, oh, but the monster's gonna run 10 squares and catch up. No, you can say, hey, if you guys are just running away all out retreat, maybe the monsters let you simply because they may have fallen companions. They, you know, or th they might be like, ah, oh, you know, even though we were winning, you know, as a monster, the monster himself is thinking, well, I'm still alive and they're running away. That's okay by me because I survived the combat and maybe I, you know, and maybe one of their fallen companions is still there and they left him behind. Oh, well, that happens too. But the the point is a bad combat doesn't necessarily have to result in a party kill. Um, and if you're tempted to fudge, you could even manipulate the combat in other ways to... You know, if if for some reason it was a totally unfair fight and that was on you as a DM, you're like, oh, I screwed up, you know. You can, during the combat, you know, change hit points. You know, the, the creatures don't have to be exactly as the stats say in the manuals. You know, uh, the paladin gets a good critical hit on one of them and maybe it doesn't kill it by the die rolls. When they roll their damage, they're like, oh, I got 23. You can say, oh, that guy went down, you know, oh, you knocked him down or whatever. You can change other elements in the story without cheating the dice to help the players along. Now, some people might argue, how is that better? Again, because you're not changing the dice, you're not altering the trust factor between you and your players. You are not sort of cheating fate, as they say. You're you're still letting the dice land where they are, but you know, again, you can have monsters flee, you can have them die maybe a little bit sooner than they might have, or you can alter the circumstances of the combat without cheating, you know, without without changing 
die results. So I don't want this going too long. Um, I did a whole article on this that talks about these points and has a couple examples. So, um, you know, check out the, the blog as well. Check out what I read, what I wrote a year ago. And, you know, think about what you might be taking away from your players by changing the dice. And also consider a game where you're rolling in the open, because like I said, it adds a lot of fun. It adds a lot of tension. It, it, it's really, really cool. Actually. I've, I'm a huge proponent of rolling in the open. Um, and you know, there are some roles that I occasionally do in private, especially if the role result itself gives away too much meta information, you know, like, I might roll their perception checks behind a screen if I know that there's something they might need to notice up ahead without telling them, oh, roll me a perception check. And they're like, oh, now we need to be on guard. You know, no, I'll just, you know, I might have those perception rolls on the side to see if they, you know, notice something or something like that. So there are times when you still roll behind the screen, but in terms of combat and other situations where, <clears throat> you would normally, you might be tempted to manipulate the dice, the damage dice, the hit, the two hit. Just, you know, do that out in the open and you'd be surprised how much tension and fun that can actually add to the game. So, um, this has been Marty Walser and I'm the Raging Owlbear on social media. Check out my Twitter feed where I talk about D&D &D a lot. Check out my blog where I talk about D&D a lot and like and subscribe my videos, which come out very sporadically, but you know, that's a good reason for you to subscribe because then you'll be like, oh, hey, there's a new video. So thanks for listening.